Well, hello everybody. Welcome and good morning. Uh, my name is Ricardo Cabrera and I am representing the Latino Chamber of uh, Boulder County. The, let, me, let me say that again. The Latino Chamber of Commerce of Boulder County. I always get this wrong. And uh, today we are talking with Daniela Young and Marisa Kruger and uh, they both work and represent the Latino Community Foundation of Colorado. So let's start with Marisa. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, yeah. Um, I am the coordinator of evaluation and events at the Latino Community Foundation of Colorado. Um, and I've been with the organization for a little over a year now. So that's exciting. And I'm just really enjoying all the work that we're doing so far. Excellent. Thank you for that. And Daniela, your turn. Hi, I'm Daniela Young. And I I am the program officer with the Latino Community Foundation of Colorado. I've been with the organization for um, a bit over four years. And in this role, I oversee Latino Age Wave Colorado, which is um, a program serving Latino older adults um, and helping them be able to age the way that they want to in, in the state. Wow, cool. Well, since you mentioned that, why, why don't you tell me more about that program, that particular program? Yeah, it's um, one of the foundation's flagship programs. And for several years, the program was focusing on understanding the breadth of challenges that it is to age as a Latino older adult in Colorado. There's just some barriers that not every group of aging adults has to face. So mixed status families, not having the same access to different resources or programs or services. Um, in your language or services that are culturally relevant and responsive. And so the first part of the program was looking at statewide breadth of challenge. And then in the last four years, we've been looking at depth of challenge and partnering with um, community leaders called the Conectoras de Montbello in the Montbello community of the city of Denver to understand the depth of challenges that come with aging um, as a Latino older adult in the city of Denver. Um, so we've been able to learn so much and collect so much data on, on that and create this community-based support network and bring in partners to directly address needs and challenges for the older adults that we serve. Wow, that's amazing. And it's, uh, it, it's so good that you guys are doing that because, uh, you know, nobody thinks about this, but you know, aging well is tough, but aging well as a minority or a monolingual, you know, you know, it, it adds a layer of difficulty and, uh, and uh, thank you for that. So Marisa, tell me a little bit more about then what other things are flagship programs that the Latino Community Foundation of Colorado has. Yeah, so um, at the LCFC, you'll hear us uh, use the acronym a little bit. Um, we have a few different programs and most of them are through our giving circles. So we have our Young Latino Philanthropist Giving Circle, um, which is, as it sounds, <laughs> um, under mm -hmm. 35 um, philanthropists. And then we also have our Latinas Lead Giving Circle which hosts one of our events that we have every year. Unfortunately, this year it is virtual, but um, our Latinas Lead Power Summit, and then it also holds our fellowship program, our Las Mujeres Valientes Fellowship, which we have six fellows statewide, all women of wisdom, so over 50 years old, doing um, multi-generational leadership trainings throughout. So most of them are virtual right now, which is really exciting because we're getting very familiar with the virtual space with all ages and all generations. So it's been going really well so far. Well, very nice. You and the rest of the world, I guess, are virtual and here <laughs> we are doing a recording virtually is the way of the future. Um, cool. Well, tell me a little bit more about uh, your uh, Ayuda Colorado. It's, uh, you know, it's got some major parts and focuses on different things. Can you tell me about that? Absolutely. Yeah. So as of March, just like most foundations and organizations had to take a little shift from what we normally did. Um, so right now we're doing our Ayuda Colorado work, which is to specifically support and stabilize our Latino led and Latino serving nonprofit organizations and immigrant and refugee serving organizations 
throughout the state. So we're doing that through our three different lanes. So we have our grant making lane, which so far we've granted over $400,000 in rapid response um, funding along with funding to community leaders in direct service areas of the state. Um, and then we also are doing capacity building work with our grantee organizations. So we host executive director roundtables. Um, we hold relationship building spaces for these grantees and these executive directors to kind of have that support system throughout this very interesting crisis we're going through. Um, and then also our resource lane, which is consistent resources that have been sifted through a Latino lens, ensuring that the resources are safe for immigrants and undocumented communities. Um, and then also just to, you know, fight back on that overwhelming um, sense of getting way too many resources at once. Um, and through this, uh, we have also created our impact report, um, which is just gauging the impact of COVID-19 on the immigrant and Latino communities in Colorado. Wow. <laughs> wow, you're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, wow, that's a lot. And that's, that's great that there's a group like you guys. Uh, and, and so, so your reach and your uh, market is all of Colorado, right? It's not just Denver, because you guys are located in Denver. Yes, that's correct. All right. So, and how can we find you guys or, or other organizations and people find where you're at and how to access all this great programming you have? Yeah. Um, so we are, our website is very easy. It's latinocfc.org. Um, pretty easy to find. And then also recently, as everyone, I think we've been really going for social media. So our Facebook page, we've been releasing resources and just kind of different content about news stories and everything going on. Um, and then if you're interested in a specific program, our Las Mujeres Valientes also have a Facebook group that you can join. If you just search Las Mujeres Valientes, um, I think there's a lot of ways to find us, right, Daniela? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're pretty easy to find. Even if you just Google Latino Community Foundation, we're one of the top search things that come up. Excellent. So I will put on the description of this video here anyway, uh, some contact information and a little blurb about your group. And uh, with that, I have a surprise question for you. Uh, Marisa, tell me what is your favorite hobby? My favorite hobby? Oh, surprise. Um, I think my favorite <laughs> hobby is to cook. I really just love cooking and um, making dinner for my family and just, you know, those traditions that are passed on in those recipes, so. Okay, I wanna know now what's your specialty? Oh, my specialty. Um, I really enjoy my enchiladas or my mac and cheese. <laughs> mm, right, uh, worldly, the worldly tradition there. How <laughs> yeah. about you, Daniela? Hobbies, um, I love reading and clipping magazines and making vision boards. So there's oh. a few spots in my home where like they're just collections of random clippings or pictures or quotes that inspire me or people that inspire me. And um, yeah, just kind of oh, helps that's, keep up that's on That's very space. cool. Very cool. I see some stuff behind you there that I bet oh, you yeah. put together. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> All right, well, thank you ladies. It's been a pleasure and uh, till next time. Thank you. Thank you.